Uh, welcome everyone to the Deliverance Center. Um, we are going to receive this message from the Lord tonight, aren't we? Amen. Uh, I know that the Lord has anointed Brother Mike to a great ministry. We just praise God for that. And I wanted to share a song with you. It's one I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. It was written by a man named Judson W. Van Deventer. I know that's a mouthful, but um, <laughs> this was his testimony, and I hope it's ours tonight. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. Oh, to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Heavenly Father, we just thank You for this time where we come together and hear Your Word. We thank You for this building. We thank You for all the utilities and all Your provisions that You have given this ministry. And we just pray that your spirit be here among us for healing and deliverance in your son's dear name. Amen. How'd that song go? Okay. Okay. Good. When the revival hits, I'm going to have a choir, a glossa choir. Yeah. First one in history of America. A glossa choir. Only singing in tongues only. I need to start recruiting them. Pretty soon. Looking forward to that. Huge. Hey, thanks for showing up tonight. Got another interesting teaching for you, I hope. I've been doing a series of teachings on the satanic secrets, secrets the devil doesn't want you to know. And I got another one for you tonight. So let's let him have it. Uh, the seminar is on the uh, 29th, the last Friday of the month, as, as usual. Here's my uh, current radio schedule, my Monday evening, Monday through Friday show at 5.30, switched over to 5.45. All my radio shows are always available 24-7 off the website. You just go to that site there and you can listen to the programs. This one went uh, real well last week. I ministered to over 22,000 listeners on this one, darkskyradio.com. It's a secular internet radio station. It's on every night, Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock Pacific time. We are now on Pacific time, right? If you want to help us with the ministry, you can uh, purchase something at Amazon.com. You have to go to Smile Amazon, put in our charity name, and they will donate to our ministry while you buy a bunch of stuff you really don't need. <laughs> Tonight's teaching is on my Facebook page, Michael W. Smith, and this one, House of Healing AZ, on YouTube. Send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you the self-deliverance list for Christians and mentally ill Christians. You can donate to the ministry off the website. Thank you. I wrote three books. They're in the bookstore. One on exposing Satan, which I'm doing tonight. One on healing and the other one on the curing mental illness. Thursday night is booming around here. It is utterly amazing. <laughs> Stories I'm getting out of our Thursday night healing room. Uh, we moved the healing room into this sanctuary 
because we were getting so many people coming. So our mental illness healing class has been switched over to the uh, small sanctuary over there. And we, that place apparently was packed out. So we had to move here Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Okay? If you know somebody who's mentally ill, then we got a special class for that small sanctuary. Thursday nights at 7. I will be on uh, this uh, Talk America radio station uh, later this month, 10 p.m. Pacific time. I'll see a teen challenge at the end of this month. We're going to do some staff training down there. We're also going back for a healing and deliverance service down in Tucson in May. Uh, as soon as the service starts, uh, Kelly's supposed to go around and shut all these doors and lock them, uh, but she forgot, so I'm going to be terminating her next week. <laughs> Once the doors are locked, you can't get out unless you donate in the red boxes. Learn that from Cree Flow Dollar. <laughs> Tonight's Bible study is based on the King James Bible. And uh, we sell this version of the Bible, the KJ3. This is the best translation of the New Testament I've ever seen. What they did was they just looked at the text, translated it exactly or as close to exact as they could translate it. And then they had you figure out the rest. Unlike the other Bibles that give you commentary and show you what to think and how to believe. Okay? Uh, if you have a Bible... Make sure you're studying out of a Bible that uses the received text as the basis for the New Testament. Uh, all of them use the Masoretic text for the Old Testament. Okay, so if you use the received text, you won't have a bunch of verses missing out of your Bible. Okay, if you use a Bible that has the Westcott, Holt, and a couple of the other groups of texts from the New Testament, you're going to have scriptures that you go, where do these scriptures go? Well, they're, they're not in some of the other manuscripts, okay? So these, for example, they're not all of them, but as an example, uh, all use the received text. Okay? That's a uh, community interest slide. Okay, let's get to our superbug teaching. Uh, the devil has created a bunch of bacteria now that do not respond to antibiotics. They're called, yes, they're called superbugs and they're starting to invade America. They cannot stop them. If you get one of these superbugs, you're probably going to die. The antibiotics do not work. There are spiritual superbugs out there. I'm going to go over one of them tonight. The mind controller bug. Let's go to uh, a brief review. This is a review of, from other studies. 1 Timothy 4. The Spirit uh, speaks clearly and expressingly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. You have to have faith to depart from it. Correct? So we're talking about born again and or spirit filled Christians here. They will abandon their faith in the latter times. They will do that because they are giving heed to or focusing on planos deceiving spirits and didascalia teachings of daimonian demons. Where are these teachings at? Your local Porn bookstore? No. They don't have teachings of Jesus over at the porn bookstore. They're in church. It's the church that's going to spread these fake false doctrines. Okay? The Christian church, the ones who are born again, not the Mormons, they're already spreading crazy doctrines. We bought this building from the Mormons. You're sitting in a Mormon building. 
I had to have a crew come here and cast out all the demons. I'm not kidding. One of them didn't get caught and manifested a couple times. He scared Kelly one time. She never gets scared. If I have to face something scary, I send her. <laughs> well, that thing finally left. What's my point here? This is the, the great falling away, the great the apostasy is what? The church falling away. The true church. Is this making sense? It's not the Jehovah Witnesses or the Scientologists. They've already fallen away. In fact, they were never in to fall away, if that makes sense. They were never in in the first place. They were cults from day one. Yeah. And the way this is going to happen is what? Through the person's mind. Spirits get into a person's brain and they take over the person's mind. How do they do that? Well, we'll go in that in a minute, but they don't just come down out of a spaceship and use a demineralizer, whatever that is, and suck your mind out of your head. That They don't have that kind of power. They can't do that. They don't have those skills. You have to let them in. The person has to cooperate with them and allow them space in their mind. That's how they take over the person's mind. As it gets worse and worse and worse and worse, the person develops what? A mental illness where the mind is now chronically malfunctioning. Eh? Before they were mentally ill, their mind was not chronically malfunctioning. The spirits, like the Holy Spirit, always starts you here and takes you here. The Holy Spirit takes you from a born-again babe in Christ, and if you allow him to, turns you into an animalistic killing disciple, a demon smasher, a massive faith healer, a powerful man and woman of God, whom the devil and his crew fears. Very few people ever reach that point, obviously, so they stay somewhere in this area as a regular Christian. Most Christians are literally spiritually useless. What we're trying to do here at the Deliverance Center is motivate you to go from being a Christian to a disciple. The demons do the same thing, only in reverse. They start you here, and they drag you down as far as they can go. If they can, you enter the world of mental illness. How's all that happen? Bang. In the mind. Mind control is the devil's goal, and it is the goal of the Holy Spirit. They're both fighting for the same thing in you. This is a war between darkness and the light of Christ. It's a war and a fight to the death. If the demons get your mind, you die ugly, broke, sick, and stupid. If the Holy Spirit gets your mind, you go on from glory to glory, faith to faith, victory to victory, learning from your defeats, and growing by grace. In the end, you are translated to gl glory with a spectacular reward. If the demons get your mind, you die ugly, you die stupid, you die a spiritual loser, and you miss your destiny. You die an addict. You die confused. You die mentally ill. You missed your golden opportunity as a human being to find God's perfect will for your life. It's a war and a fight to the death. Whoever gets the person's mind gets the rest of the person.
Okay. Hebrews 8, thus saith the Lord, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel in those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. This is a different Greek word now. The anoia means deep thoughts of the mind. Okay. So I can have a thought in my mind literally any second, you know. You go out with your family, you're sitting in the car, right? That's a pain in the butt right there. <laughs> and you're going to lunch, and thoughts start popping in your mind. Burger King, Taco Bell, the ultimate, Golden Corral. <laughs> These are random thoughts that have no real value. That's not the word. That's not in Greek. That's a thought in your head. A thought. Uh, I like uh, Diet Mountain Dew over orange. That's just a thought. It's a preference thought. It means nothing to nobody. Who gives a rat's fanny what I like to drink? Nobody. A deep thought is something you have pondered and you have accepted into your personhood what you th really think see and that's what everybody wants to know not what you're thinking but what you really think uh-huh and all the married people said amen you'd like to know what the person's really thinking at work not what they think this is what they really think Jehovah said I will put my laws in their deep thoughts in their hearts and I'll write them in their hearts that's a that's a generic term for your inner man your conscience your mind your soul your spirit is your inner man four parts right Hebrews 12 consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners who's he talking about here of course, God's son. Antilogia is what? It's the stuff you run into every day. Somebody's saying something negative about you. I never get any amens in this section. Amen. Uh, it rarely happens to me. But I see it happens to you a lot. Jesus was trashed verbally. Trashed down the stretch and what did he do uh, he didn't faint or get weary we went over this last week your mind is related and affects your soul where your emotions <laughs> reside your soul has your emotions your mind contains your thoughts if the devil can get your mind he can then attack your emotions, reinforcing the thoughts in the mind and controlling you through your emotions. Any person who is controlled through their soul is, by definition, a carnal Christian. Carnal Christians live out of their feelings, how they feel emotionally, how they feel physically. The devil pulls them around like they're Nothing and nobody like pulling a puppy around nothing nothing to it People who live out of their spirit man now. That's a different story the Holy Spirit People who learn to trust the Holy Spirit in your spirit man. They are not carnal Christians They are spirit-filled spirit-led Christians. There's a difference Carnal Christians are led by their emotions How they feel from day to day depends Reflects their Christianity Your emotions will send you on this Christian life a yo-yo Christian life. Oh my god. This is horrible Everybody gets totally exhausted living that kind of a Christian life They are great for a while then they crash then they're great then they crash then they're great and eventually what happens to them boop they Crash and backslide Almost all carnal Christians have backslid several times in during their Christian life Why 
<laughs> their souls. Lest you be wearied and faint in your emotions. I'm so tired of listening to that person. So tired of that family member. So tired of that sickness. So tired of that temptation. It wears you down. See what he's trying to say? Jesus did not do that. He overcame it. Revelation 22. The spirit and the bride say, come. Anybody that hears, come. What's he saying there? Appealing to your free will. Let him that is thirsty come. And then it is, says, whoever will. Thalo means wants to. The Holy Spirit will only deal with you through your free will. He will never force you to do anything physically, spiritually. He won't force you to come here. He won't force you to go to church. He won't force you to serve God. You have to want to do it. You have to have a want to her. The devil is the opposite. He will do anything he can to goad you into doing exactly what he wants done. Your brain is spectacular. The brain is probably God's greatest creation. The, the human brain. It's absolutely amazing. It operates like God operates. God has a brain. It's spectacular. Scientists estimate we only use a very small percent of our brain. Most of it lies there dormant. I've met several people where almost 100% of it are darn near dormant. <laughs> Married a couple of them. Now let's get back to this slide. Let's focus. Everything going on in your mind is a miracle. You're God's greatest creation. See, you're not an animal, a plant, or an insect, or a fish. Those are all deficient creations. See? Evolution's a lie. Nothing evolved out of anything. The whole thing is a crock of of uh, amen. It's a crock of amen. I caught myself there. <laughs> yes, sir. Almost ruined my ministry. <laughs> the human brain is the most amazing thing on the planet Earth. It is incredible. And you've met people when you you said the same thing about them. How does their brain work? That's incredible. They are monumentally stupid. Your brain is absolutely amazing how it works. Supposedly, it only takes up 2% of your body weight, but 20% of all the energy in the body and all the oxygen you use goes to your brain. Your mind is in your brain. Romans 12. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God, to God, which is your Logikos. What's that? Rational. You sat down and you say, wait a minute. I get it now. Wait just a minute here. My life here is very temporary. And if I live in sin or I live like a carnal Christian, at the end of my life, I'm going to have nothing. So I'm going to say, wait a minute here. This is, God is worth serving. He will provide. And you know what? I can make it. Because God chose the weak things of the world to confound the wise. I don't have a crowd following me around every day. I'm just a regular person. I may be less than a regular person. I'm in a great spot for God to use me, 1 Corinthians 1. And that makes sense not to waste my life doing carnal things, chasing the almighty buck, chasing lust, living in sin. It just, yeah, that's, that's a smart move. I'm sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I might live 60, 70, 80 years, maybe 100 if a miracle happens. And eternity is 100 times God only knows what. So there's no comparison between my life, even if I live 100 years, which you won't, to eternity, which is, has no ending. I'm thinking about that. It doesn't make any sense for me to serve the devil. I need to serve the Lord. I want to rule and reign in eternity right here. I want to live in the New Jerusalem, and I want to serve God for eternity. That's what I want to do. I've, I've sat down and I thought about it. 
Yes, sir And the Holy Ghost helped me think them thoughts he's encouraging me to think them Right That's your reasonable logical Service to God do not be conformed to this world, but be you transformed Metamorpho is a Greek word that means to be completely morphed into the renewing Anachinesis means renovating your mind see when I was a sinner my mind was focusing on sin I was looking for money. I was looking for success. I was looking for orgasms I was looking for fun. I was looking for a party. Whatever carnal stuff I can get my hands on as a sinner I did it for years. I didn't come to God till late later in life as my 40s and All I thought about was sinful stuff which was by nature What I had always done because I had the old nature and I just did what you know leopards have spots Mike was sinning Duh but when I got filled with the Holy Ghost and I became a born-again Christian the, the Spirit of God started to renovate my mind so that I started to see what I was doing chasing chicks is not working chasing the old money buck is, is a, a waste of life I began to see things in a proper perspective in a way a veil kind of boom, fell off my my eyes so to speak and I noticed that all Christians that went through that process it wasn't particular to me at all far from it every born-again Christian see when you don't run a church you can scratch your back during a teaching nope. <laughs> nobody cares don't you see it see that's I'm thinking I have I'm, I'm renovating my mind and then God taught me your mind is never totally renovated because I will never be totally exactly like Jesus Christ the Son of God but my goal in life and yours is to get as close to that standard as I can over the course of my existence on the planet and then I, and I die right I'm using my mind here tonight I'm thinking logically and some of you are going right amen because you're thinking logically with me See, we're thinking together. See, great minds think. There it is. Renovating what? Your body? Your th no. Ooh, your mind. You're renovating your mind. When I was a sinner, I loved happy hour. I loved getting a buzz. I loved getting half drunk. I loved having an orgasm. I loved sex. I loved women. Yeah, those were carnal things that I held in high esteem. But as my mind renovated, I began to see that my God, I was walking down the path to dying doing that. I didn't know that. I had this veil, so to speak, taken off my eyes. I began to see there was another world out there, not just my carnal world, but the spirit world. I didn't know that. I was ignorant. So that you may what Dr. Manzo, test it Test it out the devil brings you all kinds of stuff Constantly and you got to test each one Hey okay? Once you go to that church wait a minute. Let me test that won't you marry that person. Whoop! hold it. Let me test that Why don't you go to minister here hold it. Let me test that okay? See you're using your mind you're using your spirit man and you are learning to test everything that comes your way. The Holy Spirit wants you to test it. He told you to test it. For in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is to be established. You're supposed to test everything. You don't just look at somebody and go, oh, they're funny. They're packing. They're good looking. I'm going to take him home to mom. We're getting married. That is a recipe for the gates of hell. No, you like the person. It seems to be going well. Boop. It needs to be tested. Everything needs to be tested. Everything I say tonight, you are not just to accept that, like some bird sucking in worms. You are to test everything I say. I'm not some phony TV preacher. 
trying to goad you into believing a bunch of crap you have your own mind you do not let me dominate your mind you check out brother mike mother mike is not god you don't just accept everything he says check it out test it what that guy was really saying was this verse he he was doing his quote homework that was using your mind following the Word of God checking stuff out not just buying something like a rot gut TV preacher they just want you to swallow any kind of crap they poop out so they can control you and manipulate you they want your estate they want your money they blah 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 it's all crap you got to test everything yes. see you don't just buy it okay I just blew my fleet of luxury vehicles there but that's fine <laughs> that's good but here's in your heart because you're a born-again Christian you have a good heart and everybody here who's born again has a good heart every single person even if you have demons it doesn't matter the demons aren't in your spirit man they're in your body Un until and for about another hour and then they're gonna be out <laughs> your heart is good you see that the Holy Ghost lives in you and he's he's ridiculous good and he lives in there so deep inside you sir l truck loads of goodness in there yeah, holy right, ghost goodness, right in there right. right in that man sitting right there on the white t-shirt that guy there and he wants like you want the good acceptable and that's what you want that's what you really want even a carnal christian wants that if you if you have one uh, i've had hundreds of them come in to see me you're sitting there, they're living a carnal Christian life, they're certified failures, but deep inside their stinking life, they want to do what's right. And they wouldn't have called me and set up an appointment if that wasn't true. See, nobody just calls up and says, I want to, can I come in and get an autograph? <laughs> what do you, nobody wants an autograph from me. I'm a regular person like everybody else. Something inside them the Holy Ghost goodness is telling them you need to receive the good and perfect and Acceptable will of God and you know you want it You know you want it It doesn't matter if you have demons. Yeah, it it's a battle but deep inside That's the consistent part of you that God loves likes you Most of you came here alone tonight. You know, not many other people like you, but listen, Father likes you. <laughs> Father likes you. Okay. Amen. I came alone tonight. I ain't bothered. It doesn't bother me. Because I know Jesus said, I am never alone. He said, You'll all forsake me tonight and leave me alone, but I'm never alone. You, my friend, are never alone. Amen. That's the truth. Second Corinthians four. Our God, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to those who are lost, in whom the God of this I own age has blinded the not in my thoughts of those who are apostles, unbelievers. And as I told you before, God years ago showed me there's two types of unbelievers: sinners and Christians. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine upon them light exposes darkness it exposes lies exposes fabrication it exposes false doctrines and that's what you want the light of Christ shining on your mind how does the devil beat everybody well here's how he does it, it says it right here in Revelation 12 he's called the great dragon and a serpent and the devil and Satan Diabolos and Satanas He is the false accusing adversary of your life He's your false accuser 
Everything you do that's right, he'll try to nitpick. Everything you do with wrong, he'll amplify it. See, to make you look like a complete jackass. And he'll go to God. He'll go and point his finger at you, running you down, trashing you. He knows if you accept that, he can win. If you don't accept it, recognizing that the blood of Christ has left you in a perfect position. Your spirit man is perfect and holy. If you understand that, his accusations no longer land on you. He's the accuser of the brethren. But how does he beat everybody? He's a deceiver. How do you deceive somebody? You got to deceive them in their minds. Correct? In America, we call it what? Telemarketing. You call the person up. <laughs> Mr. Schmidt, who's this? I'm a Duga from Nigeria. Oh, this is going to be a good call. <laughs> yes, sir. Can't wait to hear the call from Nigeria. Let me tell you what you're about to tell me, sir. Oh, you don't know. Yes, I do. Uh, you had a relative die. They inherited millions, but you don't have the money to pay the court costs and everything. But if I pay the court costs for you, you'll split those millions with me. Is that correct, sir? I do know that. Okay. See? Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's called discernment. It's deception. He was trying to, he, they're trying to deceive you. Correct? How do they do it? Clunk through your mind. <clears throat> All right, let's go to psychology for a minute. I learned this years ago. I've mentioned it a couple of times before. Systematic desensitization. It's a technique developed by uh, a psychiatrist many years ago on how to help people uh, with phobias and anxiety disorders. So it doesn't cure them, but it is a helpful method of managing the illness. It does work from a secular standpoint. The Holy Ghost is able to cure it completely. Psychiatry can't cure it, but they can help it through this method of treatment, right? It's a system where you're gradually exposed to something in a controlled environment which allows you to get used to it and it your fears and your anxieties about the whatever it is slowly dissipate and while you're exposing them to it you're using behavior modification you're using therapy techniques you're using counseling techniques to get the person's mind to understand that you're having a phobia it's unrealistic. It's not real. You don't need to fear that whatever it is and the most important phobias are what? Darkness Spiders that kind of stuff. They're in the top, top two. I believe so You slowly gradually expose somebody to a spider. Yeah, and uh, I don't have a phobia of a spider But I don't like them uh, they, They're creepy looking in fact insects period are creepy. You ever seen an insect? They all suck. <laughs> there are no insects that kind of brighten your day. They're like, wait a minute, that's an insect. That sucks. They're, they're ugly. Some of them stink. Some of them are dangerous. Some, but they're all, they've got a creep factor to them. I don't know, maybe it's just me. There are some weirdos out there who love insects, but. <laughs> I could go all day without communing with insects. I don't I don't wake up in the morning. I don't have an urge for it They're creepy yeah. So spiders are number one phobia so you gradually expose a person to a little spider Then you get a big one then you get a big tarantula then you work them closer to it Then you get them over there eventually you got the tarantula crawling up the arm like Johnny Carson and you know they've they're not wanting to commit suicide is, is that a okay explanation of it that's basically kind of what it is this is satan's whew, one of his greatest secrets that he uses on christians 
and human beings in general. He uses this thing to the max. He loves it. Here's how you do it. Let's take a look at an example of it. We're going to go back about 3,000 years here. Strike that, maybe four. Okay? Let's take a look at the lovely Lot family. Oh, these are, these are guys you want to move in next door to. They're what we call beauties. Genesis chapter 13, let's go. You know what happened. This city, two cities and all the other cities surrounding these two major cities, all the suburbs, had gone into gasping, horrible sin. Crimes and killings and murders and homosexuality and incest and you name it. Uh, these cities had hit the bottom of the barrel. And two angels came to save Lot and his family. The angels get there and say, Lot, how you doing? Good. Listen, this place is going to burn like the gates of hell. You got to get out of here. Okay. He says, do you have anybody in your family that wants to go with you? Virtually nobody. Okay. What had happened there? Day after day, month after month, year after year, Lot had been systematically exposed to crime and sin and perversion, sexual perversion. Every day, click, click, exposed. Right? He lived there. He lived there. He went there of his own free will. See? Abraham, being a good man, says to his relative Lot, listen, our, our herdsmen are fighting over all kinds of things. We don't want that. You pick where you want to go. You get to pick first. See, now that's a confident person in Christ. The person that doesn't have to have their own way, who doesn't have to control everything. Those are people that have true faith in God. Your anxiety ridden Christians, they want to go first. Go, What'd you get? What, what am I going to get? How, well, how's it going to work? They want to know every answer to every question before you even get out the door. That's not faith. Lot, Abraham goes, listen, pick what you want, anything. Take anything. Well, Lot goes, really, anything? Well, this guy's not too bright. Okay. I'll take uh, uh, whatever you don't want. Well, I don't, I don't want any of it. You take it first, Abraham said. Right? Because Abraham knew God would provide for him. So he didn't need to provide for himself. That's good preaching. <coughs> Lot could have anything he wanted. Abraham knew he Holy Ghost had him covered. And then what happened? He looks over the plain there. He sees all the best land. Right? He looks around. He goes, hey, this is great. This is like a garden of Eden over there. I'll tell you what, Abraham. Uh, you can have this desert area. I'll take all this beautiful land. He goes, go ahead and take it. It's yours. Love you. Go ahead. So he took all of it, all the good land he could see, everything. That's an anxiety-based Christian. They grab and grope for everything they can get when they can get it. For fear, they're going to run out later. It's lack of faith. Gimme, 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 gimme is actually a fear-based illness. They're afraid they're going to run out later. So Lot wanted all of it. I'll take all of it. Okay, Lot, take it, buddy. Yeah. What was he doing there? He was heading into an entire world after several years. He would become systematically desensitized to his environment. Nowadays in our society, violence is like nothing. Nobody thinks anything of it. Why? Well, you're bombarded with violent activities everywhere, social media, TV, cable, whatever it is, and the person starts to see violent activities as perfectly normal. What's the problem with that? Shooting somebody, cutting off their head. Horror movies now uh, aren't like Alfred Hitchcock movies where he tried to draw you in with your mind. Now it's just all pitiful blood and guts. And the worse it gets, they try to get a new audience. Everybody has to up the other person. 
What are they doing? The old method of a horror movie doesn't work anymore. Boo. Wait a minute. I'm pa I passed boo at age two. You know, can you give me some guy with a head flying across the room quickly? You're systematically desensitized to certain things. And it becomes normal to you, correct? For example, Navy SEALs have to be systematically desensitized. They put them in odd environments so that they learn to operate normally under adverse situations, which is exactly what the Holy Ghost does to you. He doesn't send you a trial, but he allows it to come in to help you navigate like a Navy SEAL under an adverse environment, which allows you to grow and become a stronger non-carnal Christian. Adversities, temptations, and trials are your very best friends. Nobody grows quickly while everything's going their way. Hello? Yeah. People don't grow real fast while they're celebrating touchdowns. It's when you don't make a touchdown, that's how Belichick wins the Super Bowl every year. He uses adversity and failure as a training tool. Hello? If you go through adversity, temptations, and trials, you are a blessed person because God is setting you up for a ministry to minister to somebody else who is currently going through the same things you went through before. So you then become God's messenger to them. What are you going through? Well, here's what it is. Ah, I went through that exact thing two years ago. My husband cheated on me. We went, we went broke. See? And here's how God brought me through it, and here's how he'll bring you through it. Bang, you're helping that person. Amen. Hello? Amen. Hey, I just, I just, everything's going perfect for me. I'm so happy I can't see straight. <laughs> There's no ministry there. What do you need to... <laughs> that person's not growing. In fact, the devil comes along and says, man, you're killing it. Yeah. He tries you to take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And he does. Yes, he does. And you do. And then you go bad. Hello? You got to be a Navy SEAL, man. You, you don't sit behind a desk working a computer. Dude, you're out under adverse environments learning how to become a great soldier. See? And only an elite group are chosen to be SEALs. This group here can't cut the mustard, so to speak. You know, I throw a lot of food terms in there. That draws in the people who eat a lot. And what do you do is only a select few ever make it to being a disciple of Christ. Hello. The disciples of Christ are the Navy SEALs, the Christians, the big group. They're still struggling. Peter was in the big group. Later on, he was a seal, able to function for God under any circumstances. Is this helping? Genesis 19, Lot went to them, and he shuts the door. He says, hey, all these, these criminals and perverts are outside, and uh, they saw some fresh meat. What was happening there? The perverts had become systematically desensitized to normal sexual perversion. See? Uh, anal intercourse, raping kids, uh, group sex, whatever it is. They'd all ha they'd had their fill of that, but they had never had any angel sex. Well, this is great. Lot got a couple of angels coming over. I bet they're great in bed. Hello? They were systematically desensitized to normal sexual perversion in their minds. Does that make sense? <clears throat> People who are sexually perverted don't wake up that way on Tuesday. It's a process of desensitization so that now they're able to have sex with children and it doesn't bother them. They didn't start out doing that. 
you have to work up to it or in this case down to it so these perverts saw a chance for some angel sex and say hey this is great so lot because he was uh, following the eastern custom you were always to protect your visitors he said hey listen let me talk to you for a minute bonk he shuts the door lot was a big shot in town he was wealthy as a multimillionaire. He had the blessing of God gave Abraham spilled over on him. He was loaded, loaded with money. And everybody knew him. They were right down to his house. So Lot, the big shot, gets the visitation of two angels. Nobody ever got that before. Well, they saw them two angels, and well, those are GQ angels. And these weren't your common run-of-the-mill ugly kind of angels. These two guys were hot. Yes, sir. They took a look at them two guys. Were, Whoa! Now that's somebody I got to rape. In their mind, that thought was perfectly normal. Why they had spent years going through systematic desensitization of various levels of perversion. Is this making sense? Lot then, who is also desensitized, walks out and says something so asinine you can't even put words to it the guy says listen these two hot angels you're drooling over this is ridiculous you can't do that listen i'll tell you what i'll give you my two virgin daughters you can do anything you want to them rape them oral sex the whole deal gang bang them everything take them just take them and do whatever you want can you believe a father Listen, was fought or was lot a rotten human being? No. No. Listen to me. He had been in Sodom so long and been exposed to sexual perversion for so long, what he was doing seemed to him rational. You say, well, rot. He must, a lot must have been a rotten human being. No, he wasn't. He was trying to get them not to take the angels, which is a good thing, correct? But because he had been exposed to so much child sex, so much child rape, uh, so many, so many perverted things, he said, "Well, listen, I'll just take my two daughters. Don't do this." You and I reading that are going, "Are you kidding me?" What are you nuts? Listen, uh, you're coming after my two daughters? Really? Listen, these angels, they're big boys. They can take care of themselves. You're not getting close to either of them while I'm alive. Hello? But I am I have not lived in a perversion bubble for 20, 30, 40 years, and I I'm not systematically desensitized to raping children. That bothers me. It didn't bother Lot because he had seen it so many times before. It was like a nothing burger. Do to them as good in your eyes. Your eye, can you imagine that? You say, well, Lot was a horrible, rotten, stinking person. No, he wasn't. What happened to them? They finally got out of town. Only four of them got out of town. None of the other relatives went with him. None of his sons went with him. Nobody believed him. They bolted like Carl Lewis. Hussein Bolt, out the door. Guess what happened? Lot's wife was so used to living a wealthy life, she was systematically desensitized to living a life of luxury. And these are, I've got everything here in Sodom. I'm rich. We got all kinds of assets. We live in a beautiful home. I got plenty of food to eat. I got this. I got that. I got, she ignored. Everything the angels warned her about and turned around to go back home. Ha! 
had lot been poverty stricken and they didn't have a a pot to throw it out the window she wouldn't have turned around and gone back but she had become so used to having good things luxury things benefits extra gifts a privileged lifestyle that in spite of her death being <laughs> imminent and angels not other humans angels warned her to leave she turns around to go back home she turns around to leave her husband and her kids I know what you're thinking yeah you don't know my husband but anyway she left her kids then let's let's go with that so I can get this point across the husband ain't gonna work she turned around in spite of angels telling her you're gonna die this entire plane is going up in flames You'll be dead if you stay here. Run for it. Typical born again Christian. You go over it and over it and over it. If you continue down this path, if you continue believing these lies, if you continue saying these negative things, if you continue cursing yourself, if you continue disobeying, what's going to happen to you? Your life is going to crash. God's not going to stop it. She turns around and leaves her family to go back home there she is to this day. Pull her salt. Yep. Well, Lot goes up to Zoar. Guess what happened? Well, Zoar was like Sodom. Perverts running amok, criminals, liars, everything going on in Zoar. Just a smaller town. Zoar was supposed to have been burned. But because Lot asked to go there, Jehovah spared Zoar. It wasn't supposed to be spared. It was supposed to go up with the rest of them. <laughs> Lit up. Literally. Well, he goes there and goes, hey, I made a mistake here. I'm afraid. Now fear hits him when he gets there. And if, if you put your mind in their spot, you see it clearly. They're wealthy. They're privileged people. They have everything. They run out of Sodom and Gomorrah, broke, broke dogs, busted. They have nothing. His wife's dead. She's standing down there on the plane, a pillar of salt. Had he half a, half a brain, they would have went back and got her and then ground her up and sold her when they got the Zohar. But nobody was thinking, <laughs> listen. He was afraid, so he left the Zoar since he had nothing and his life was in danger because the angels originally, they didn't want him to go there. See? Listen, if you keep pushing God and demanding your way, the Holy Spirit will back off you and give you your way to teach you a loving lesson. Yes, sir. He'll back off knowing there's a giant foot coming right up there. Boom. <laughs> Where was God? Well, he was telling you, don't say that. Don't do that. Don't go there. That's dangerous. I love you. Don't do that. If you have to have your own way. Well, I can't give that up. I won't change that. I won't forgive that person. I won't call and apologize. I won't change my attitude. I'm not going to do it. Screw you and the horse you rode in on. That's scriptural, I think. <laughs> If you got to have your way, God will let you have it. After so many times, he'll just kind of step back and watch the boot. Whoosh, bang. Listen, have you ever had a boot shoved up there? That hurts. <laughs> he moves into a cave. Can you believe it? Here's this multi-millionaire now living in a cave. But had he been thinking, he would have been grateful to live in a cave because he would have been dead. God saved him. 
and would have rebuilt his life. Of course he would have. Abraham was praying for him. Well, they get to the cave. Must have been a nice one. <laughs> and the older daughter, who's what? Systematically desensitized. She had been born and grew up in Sodom and Gomorrah. She had been every single day confronted with perversion, crimes, sin, wickedness, evil, whatever it was. They saw it every day of their lives. If you see something all the time, it becomes normal to you. If you see something all the time, it, you, you lose the fear of it. Okay. Just a couple days ago, I read an article in the paper. Some gal jumps the fence, pulls out a selfie in front of a, uh, a jaguar. That's right, it was a jaguar. Okay. Now, listen, I'm not a cat expert. Okay, but from what little I know about cats, there are certain cats that you have in your house as a pet. There are other cats you look at from a long distance behind a moat and various bars. One of those cats you look at would be a jaguar. That's my understanding. Not an expert. I don't know anything about zoology. Don't ask me any questions. <laughs> Jumping a fence and getting a selfie, click, with a jaguar. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking of a relative. <laughs> yeah. And you want to tell me a story right now. Okay? I know you do, but I don't want to hear it. You see, she had done foolish things like that before. That girl didn't just suddenly wake up on Tuesday and go, you know what? I'm going to go to the zoo, hop a fence, and just get a selfie with a jaguar. Not an ocelot. Okay, now, I get that one. You could have survived that. A jaguar? I think that's... Dangerous. <sighs> okay, that's something I... Boy, that's a beautiful animal. That's how I look at them. I'm looking over here on a tower. Boy, those are great. <laughs> this girl had done stupid things before. She probably had ADHD. She probably had done a number of risky things previously. She had already been systematically desensitized to dangerous situations, so she would take risks unnecessarily. And a selfie with a jaguar is a considerable risk, in my understanding. The daughter goes, My God, we can't, there's, there's the whole planet's burned up except Zoar. And everybody in Zoar is a certified loser. We can't go back to Zoar. We'll probably get gang raped. How are we going to have kids? You say, well, she was a pervert and she was an idiot. No, she wasn't. She wasn't. Oh, God, I'm driving this point. I'm hoping it lands without me having to say it. Good people, solid, strong Christians filled with the Spirit can be systematically desensitized into an area they should never be in and they don't know it they don't know it she then says listen we're not going to have any kids and there's only one guy left with any sperm around the other daughter goes well who are you talking about dad <laughs> now you and I right now are going get me a spoon and gag me with it sleeping with your dad ladies not a fun afternoon not something you're gonna get involved in similar to getting a selfie with a jaguar well she must have been per no she wasn't she had been around it so long that what should be a warning is now normal to you incest in Sodom and Gomorrah was normal. She was thinking logically. Yeah. 
You didn't grow up in her background. You weren't born and raised with continuous perversion in front of you every day as if it was a normal thing. So it's normal to you to sleep with your dad, particularly under those circumstances. My mom's dead. She's a pillar of salt out in the plain. That can't be any good. I don't want to move to Zoar. Everybody there is a pervert. And there's nobody to marry. We're going to die without any children. This is crazy. Who we got left? Pops. Excuse me while I vomit. They're not vomiting because I have not been systematically desensitized to incest. That's not good for me. Now listen, why'd they have him drink wine? Well, they knew their dad wouldn't go for it. See, unless he'd been to happy hour. See, at happy hour, particularly later, all the girls are gorgeous. <laughs> See, the ones you, when you first got there, you were looking at, you don't want to talk to them. But as you keep drinking, and the pressure starts to mount of leaving with nobody, suddenly, <laughs> so they do what? They got to get him to accept their idea. So he had to be <coughs> chemically induced to pull it off, right? And that's why the devil is so powerfully involved in alcohol and drugs and sweeping the country with him. Why? People behave under the influence differently than they would behave sober. People think differently while they're bombed than they do when they're sober. Let's give him a bunch of wine. So the first one goes in, and he, he didn't know what time she got there. He didn't know when she left. He was drunk. On the morrow, the firstborn says, you say, well, she's a very perverted, evil person. No! No! She had been systematically desensitized unknowingly, unknowingly, by Satan to have evil things seem normal. The devil put you in an environment and began to repetitively expose you to things that are clearly wrong. But after a while, they weren't wrong to you anymore. Yes, sir. The first time you had sex, a little thing went off in your conscience. Beep, 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 beep. Warning, warning, warning. That's a sin. That's adultery. You can pick up demons. You might get somebody praying. You might pick up STD. Beep, 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 beep. And then as you did it again, beep, 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 beep. As you did it again and again, boop, boop, boop. As you did it, pretty soon the buzzer goes off. And it seems normal. This is normal to her. You go in and do it. See? My guess is the younger daughter was having some reservations. Need a little encouragement. Look at this. Second Peter describes, chapter 2, systematic desensitization. It's fantastic. Check it. God delivered Lot from the Sodom and Gomorrah destruction, who was vexed. Katapaneo means to wear somebody down. As the devil exposes you to evil, wickedness, sin, stupidity, ignorance, asininity, as he keeps putting it right in your face, it suddenly starts to feel normal. It feels right. It's not dumb. It's not a sin. That's not a sin. What are you talking about? United States of America, homosexuality, trans, chronic divorce. Well, that's just another thing now. Aren't you seeing it? It's the devil repetitively exposing you to something to bring it normal to you so he can accelerate it. 
like Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't start out that way when the city only existed for a year or two. It went that way over years. See, Christians don't just backslide. Boop, I'm backslid. I'm done. Yeah, I'm all finished. That's it for me. No, it's a long process of failure, trials, tribulations, disappointments, heartaches, sorrows. When the person gets to the point where they say, I got to give up. I can't take it anymore. What's going on there? It's the devil. He keeps putting this right in your face. Poverty, bad luck, too bad, bad karma, bad things, bad, 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 bad. Well, that's just my normal life. It becomes normal. My life sucks. I don't even think about it anymore. I just expect everything to go bad. See, they've been systematically desensitized to accept failure, poverty, defeat, all of it. But they don't start out that way. It takes him time to get you into your mood. Well, they're both, you know the story. It says he was vexed. He was worn down by a selgia. What is that? Promiscuous behavior, sensual behavior. It's usually translated in the King James Bible, wantonness or lasciviousness. You ever heard those terms? That's a selgia. It's sinful behavior. It would be uh, the best definition would probably be the highlighter. Some gal working a pole. I don't mean working a pole in a fitness clinic. I mean at the highlighter. You're trying to stimulate through your through a certain behavior lustful desires out of some imbecile that you can get money out of. So you gotta pretend you like them. How you doing, sir? Oh, you good looking. How you doing? You want a twerker? <laughs> He coughs up ten bucks. <laughs> well, she liked him. Now she don't like him. You don't have another ten bucks. Hello. So she, you go over and twerk another one. How you doing? How's that go? Five bucks. Okay. Now I, I used to like you. How much you got? Is you following this? That woman twerking you, table dancing you. Wasn't doing that day one. She was a, a cheerleader in high school. You see, she had to systematically be desensitized to exposing her body under certain circumstances. And then nobody just wakes up Tuesday and boom, they're on a pole. It doesn't happen that you got to work. It takes the devil time to get you exposed to. Hello? What is an astrophe? What is that behavior? He was worn down by the lustful, sinful behavior of the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Over a period of years. <coughs> years. When Lot went into Sodom and Gomorrah, he wasn't even married. He didn't have any kids. He had been there for years. The devil wants you to see something repetitively. After he does it, it's no longer abnormal anymore. See? Every sex addict I've ever counseled started out at a certain level of porn and ended up at this level. After a while, you got to have more perversion, weirder stuff. Not just basic sex. Does that make sense? The devil works you into his mood but it takes him time to do it they wore him down see check out Balaam the prophet <clears throat> was Balaam a true prophet of God boy he was he was a powerful prophet man he got all kinds of words from Jehovah but his life is very interesting the king sends these entourage over to get him. You've read the story, right? They say, hey, we want you to come with us because these Jews are breeding like rabbits. And there's so many of them 
they're going to overtake our land we got to stop them okay we can't physically stop them but we know you are a prophet and have power in the spirit world so we want you to come with us and put a curse on all these Jews because they're getting out of hand you read the story nobody what's well, in numbers 22 right and then they hired him and he went with them and of course you know the story Jehovah told him hey you're not to curse these people I bless these people you you give them a blessing and he does he obeys he gets words from God and he repeats them and he does the right thing but oh man Balaam grew up in an area that was very bad and he was a prophet of God but he had stains on his soul he had greed in there he was a modern-day TV preacher a true prophet of God with stains of greed in the soul Only a small percent of those rot cut TV preachers are frauds. Did you know that? The rest of them are actually born again, spirit filled Christian. What happened? They got systematically desensitized. They got dropped into the TV preacher fishbowl where you live in this little world of, of yourself. It's all about money, raising money, materialism. Cash, ships, boats, planes, limos, mansions. Don't you see that? They don't live out with the rest of us. See, we haven't been systematically desensitized to that insanity. They think it's normal. If you're exposed to something continuously and constantly, it becomes normal. There were so many gay people in Sodom, it was perfectly normal. Gay is now normal in America. You can get married, you can adopt kids. If you're gay, well, that's a nothing burger now. But in the 50s, it was not that way. Hello? So you got to get. See, it takes the devil time to keep exposing you to something. A bad person, a bad attitude, a bad environment, a rotten church, a pervert, porn, whatever it is. And it becomes normal to you. That's when he's got you. Balaam did what? He grew up in Pethor. What was that? It was a city loaded with spiritualists. Soothsayers, fortune tellers, palm readers, crystal analyzers. He grew up in a spiritual environment. Check this out. I have met hundreds of Christians over the years who were born with what society calls a sixth sense. They're born with a sensitive spirit, man, and they have a natural sense of the spirit world other people don't have. They know there's something out there and they're just kids. They know there's a God and they're just kids. They sense things. They have premonitions. They feel stuff. As a kid, nobody else feels. Well, the demons see these kids and they target them for termination because if that person gets to the Holy Spirit first and the demons don't get them, they become another superstar Christian, a John Lake or something. So the demons target them specifically for termination. How do they beat them? They send them spiritual things to do. They send them dreams. Boop. Premonition dreams. Whew. Somebody's going to die. Strange smells. I, you know, every time I have that smell, there's a funeral. Oh, I had a dream. Grandma 
died the other night she did was well, so, did I don't want to hear that well these people that have sensitive spirits they're getting readings in the spirit world that other people don't get and the demons have to take them first before God gets them or they become very dangerous to the kingdom of darkness Balaam was one of those people he had a natural feel for the spirit world he was born that way See he was a prophet of God but He had a stain in there He had a natural feel for spiritual things that were not of God he had a natural feel for material things wealth greed You can be a strong born-again Christian and have stains on your soul And you know who they are you can tell me their names if I asked you He grew up in an environment of spiritualism so he naturally Went into it he naturally caught on to the prophecies of Yahweh or Jehovah he was a natural God spoke to him. He heard him clearly. Then what happened? Well, Balaam couldn't curse the Jews. But he wanted money and material things more than he wanted God's people saved. So he went in the back door and taught the king to get the Jews involved in idolatry because Balaam knew God would judge them he did the same thing spiritually a child molester does to a child the first time you approach the child you don't yank their pants off you try to develop a bond with the child You don't just rush in and drop your chores. Oh no, far from it. You systematically desensitize the child. Hey, you know, I care about you, I'm a good guy. You know, relax, here's some candy, whatever it is, whatever process that person uses. They're systematically working them up to fondling or some other sexual perversion. Very rarely they just start out, bang, I'm perverting you. And God did he sent a plague When Joshua showed up guess what happened Joshua is a future you okay. Joshua was second fiddle for decades But he never gave up He was never the top dog no Moses Caleb Joshua Joshua was fine with it see? Joshua was a disciple he understood hey I've got a bunch of stuff to learn here I'm not gonna get jealous or give up I'm just gonna stick it out oh I see a pattern there very successful pattern for you you just stick it out and boom you can become a Joshua. Yeah. Joshua, the third fiddle, became the big dog. And Joshua, because he had been patient and worked through his trials and sat in third position for years, decades in fact, had now become properly trained by God to take over Moses' job. <laughs> Moses was the greatest man in the world. He screwed up.
Hey, you screwed up. Keep going. Moses ended up not going to the promised land. He ended up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, you didn't enjoy that one, but that one was for me. I like that one. <laughs> See, you think you're here, but God sees you there. Praise God. Praise God. And if you do what Joshua did and just pluck, keep going, don't get jealous over it. Don't try to usurp a position. Don't try to shove somebody out of the way. Don't try to step on somebody on the way to the top. Don't do that. Go through your trials. Face your tribulations. Learn what you have to learn. And you will replace the big dog. Even though God knew he was going to screw up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He screwed up. Just speak to that rock there. Well, what happened to him? Well, a bunch of crazy Jews wore him out like the people of Sodom wore out Lot. Moses worn out. These st stubborn, stiff-necked Jews, all they do is complain. I can't take this crap anymore. I've had it up to here with Jews. And I'm a Jew. He picks up the staff. Walks over to the rock. Doesn't speak to it as he was told to do. Pulls a Jose Canseco on steroids. Boom! And Yahweh said, you, you dishonored me in front of the whole nation. You're not going in. Guess who Jehovah had ready to go? Because he hadn't given up. Because he wouldn't give up because he learned Through trials and tribulations and disappointments and heartaches. He learned And kept at it. He finished his training in the minor leagues boom He Tim Tebow it Tim Tebow's trying to get him a hit What's he doing there? He's trying to be Joshua. He wants to get up to the big leagues You can't get to the big leagues Going from football to big league don't work that way. You got to go through the minor leagues You say well, I'm in the minor leagues brother Mike perfect You're in exactly the spot God wants you in because he sees you in the hall of faith Guess what Joshua did with Balaam Balaam had a million chances to repent. He didn't do it he went over to the dark side. He abandoned his prophetic ministry, which was legitimate, and he became like the other people in Pethor. Just another soothsayer. And Jehovah said, Hey, I gave you every chance in the world to repent, as he's giving you. And they did what? Joshua got rid of him. Well, he slew the prophet of God. He touched his anointed. He was his anointed. But because he, through systematic desensitization, had grown up in the spirit world, demons, he finally, through greed, went over there and ended up dead. Which is what's going to happen to you if you don't change your ways. Mm-hmm. I've had a couple dozen people die on me over the years. Can you imagine that? I got one or two currently dying now. Why? Hey, listen, this has got to change. If you don't change, you're going down. Balaam. He wouldn't change See you're gonna reap what you sow as a Christian as a sinner Everybody does we all do You reap what you sow If you sow to the flesh you will reap Corruption in this case Balaam reaped a 
sword. How do you go from being a prophet of Jehovah to a soothsayer? Look at that. Joshua chapter 13 said he was now a soothsayer. Wow, what a statement. What happened to Lot? He dwelled among them, seeing and hearing. How does systematic desensitization work? It repetitively allows you to see something wrong and hear something wrong. And doesn't bother you anymore. Every week, Christians flood movie theaters watching R-rated movies. It's as common as anything in the world. And in these movies, people are swearing and cursing and swearing from the start of the movie to the end. There's softcore porn in them. Not hardcore, it's softcore. And they've been to so many movies over the years that when they went to see Denzel Washington in a training day, it seemed normal. Well, that's how cops talk. Corrupt cops, they talk like that. Denzel Washington, who's supposed to be a Christian, <laughs> what a joke, swore from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie. Okay. If, if he's a Christian, he's a certified whore Christian. Whore for what? Money. <laughs> Money. Hey, Denzel, you're born again. Oh, sheesh. Yeah, I love the Lord. I, hey, listen, we'll give you 21 million dollars if you'll make this movie. Here's the script. He reads the script. I'll take it. Balaam took it. As you continue to watch those kind of movies, what they say and do in the movies becomes normal. You don't even think about it anymore. It's my God, it's, you watch millions of Christians watch Pulp Fiction. Well, from the beginning of that movie, and everybody's swearing or shooting one another. Well, at the end of the movie, it's just like another thing. No big deal. Why? We've all been systematically desensitized to that type of activity and that type of behavior, and therefore it doesn't register anymore. It doesn't register with you anymore. Day to day, you see and hear something the devil brings you, Day to day, and that's how he gets you. That's how he gets you. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. You know how many Christians I've counseled that have a bunch of children? I don't know how many. Do you know how many Christians I've counseled that have a bunch of children, all of them having different dads? Same answer. Bunches of them. What's going on there? Adultery to Christians who practice it regularly becomes just like another thing. Having kids with different dads suddenly starts to look, well, I did it two times, I did it three times, I did, and I did it a fourth time, whatever. Hello? I saw two this week. Just this week. Are they rotten human beings? No. No, they're not rotten human beings. What happened to them? The devil got them. He kept sending them to the movies. Well, I read an article that Daniel Washington's a Christian. I think I'll go watch training day. Wow. Joshua didn't get that kind of training. He stayed out of the sin training and kept serving God in third position, not usurping his position, not getting ahead of the Lord, not trying to step on somebody to get it. And then he became the big dog. He became the great prophet of Israel, not Balaam. Why? Joshua had not been systematically desensitized by evil. See? He had been sensitized by what was right. Praise God. He followed Moses and listened to Moses. He read the tablets. He read the law. He systematically desensitized himself against sin, not for it, like Lot. You have an opportunity. To be in the Hall of Fame. How? 
You have to systematically desensitize yourself against sin and for God's word. If you don't, you know what's going to happen? You're going to stay broke. You're going to stay sick. Yep, you're going to get married again. Oh, it's going to go bad again. It's going to go bad. Okay? I'm warning you. I'm warning you because I like you. I'm warning you I'm trying to help you. It's going to go bad again. Oh, Brother Mike speaks, speaks death into people's lives. <laughs> Listen, when you see all these people pulling a Balaam in your office for decades, hello, you kind of notice a pattern. Let's go to Las Vegas for a minute. If you live in Las Vegas, one of the rottenest, most corrupt, evil cities in the entire world, this place stinks from A to Z. It's Satan dominates almost the entire place. Well, nobody knows it. Why? Everywhere you go, you see the devil advertising what he wants you to see. Correct? And so if you live there, if you and I go there, you'd go, man, look at these billboards. This is nuts. If you live there, it's not nuts. It's not nuts to walk down the street and have a homeless guy wearing an orange shirt walk up to you. Hey, here's a free pass to a discount drink and a sandwich at a strip club over here. If you're in Las Vegas, that seems perfectly normal. If you're Donald McDowell, that seems odd. Doesn't it? No offense if you live on McDowell. What's going on here? It's the devil doing exactly what he does all the time. Everywhere you go, there's a billboard. And as you see these billboards continuously, you suddenly don't see them anymore. They seem normal. They're all over town. They're everywhere. You drive by them every day. You go to work. You go shopping. There's a billboard. There's there's a one-armed bandit. There's this and that. It all seems normal. Yeah, I went back and saw my dad here recently. And on the way back, I had a layover. In Las Vegas and while I was at the airport there was a whole section of uh, what do you call those things slot machines. slot machines you put your money in, you push the button something comes up on the screen you lose your money then you put more money and push a button <laughs> something comes up on the screen you're screwed again it's gone and there was a whole section of that there okay well I had been to Sky Harbor Many, 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 many more times than I've been to that. Carrion. Is that the name of it? Carrion Airport? What's the name of it? Karen? McCarran, sorry. I had only been there hardly at all. So I wasn't systematically desensitized to having slot machines all over the place. I've been to Sky Harbor. There are no slot machines there. Correct? Hello? So in Las Vegas, the devil pours everything on you, and it just seems normal. Okay. If you drive by Skid Row in San Francisco or L.A., now you don't even notice all these people dying on the street with diseases and poverty, and it's a certified nightmare. Now typhus has broken out in downtown Los Angeles. It's unbelievable. But if you live there, it's just like another thing. I live in Sun City where all the old people live. Massive homelessness doesn't exist in that city. So I'm not used to seeing rows of tents and sick and poverty-ridden people laying all over Sun City. I just preached on Skid Row not too long ago. I went down there with a ministry that goes down there all the time. They went down there. It was just like another thing to them. 
I'm looking around with tears in my eyes, my heart heavy. I'm staring at all these broken, lost people. Why I had never been systematically desensitized to Skid Row. I don't go there enough. It meant something to me. Hello? If you grow up in a family of people who argue and yell, you become one of the louds. And you go, well, I didn't do anything wrong. No, it's not wrong to scream at somebody if you grew up in that environment. It seems normal through the process of satanic systemization. Systematic desensitization. It's the devil getting you used to dysfunctional families. If you grew up in a family where nobody takes the blame for anything and everybody blames everybody else, you naturally feel comfortable <clears throat> pointing your finger blaming everybody else for your problems. If you grew up in that kind of a family and you continue to live like that, you will never fulfill your destiny in Christ. <clears throat> you cannot get a miracle from God or blessings from God by blaming somebody else for your problems. It will never happen. You will be right where you are in five years. Come see me then. What? If you grow up in a family where people are getting slapped around and beaten, hey, it seems normal. <clears throat> when I was in fifth grade, I grew up in kind of a white trash family. Both my parents were drunks, and there was a big knockdown drag out the night before at the house. And we had visitors from out of state, and I was in. Uh, fifth grade and this other kid that was visiting his name was Josh he was in like first or second grade well Josh had seen what went on the night before uh, all the fighting and all the bottles broken and the chairs flying I had seen it before several times before so I'm sitting there going man boy, I'm tired of this this is a this is a drag he had never seen it before. Well, the next morning, I'm standing out in the front yard, and a neighbor comes walking by, and I'm standing out in the yard, and Josh is standing out there. Well, the neighbor stops to talk to me, and I'm chit-chatting about nothing, and Josh pipes up and tells this guy what went on in our house <laughs> the night before. Oh See? So that had never happened to me before, so now... I had turned white with embarrassment and humiliation. I was so embarrassed that he let the cat out of the bag. Right? When I was a kid, I thought everybody had the cops show up to their house periodically. I thought it was like a normal thing. And then I found out as I got a little older, I said, hey, wait a minute, not everybody in the neighborhood has cops out there. So I began to see myself as, as a negative, low-rent piece of human garbage. Does that make sense? You get, it's what you get used to. And the devil helps you get used to it. He keeps bringing it to you. So it becomes nothing to you. And when it becomes nothing to you, that's when he's got you. Correct? If you grow up in a religious family, hating Jews... In this family here is perfectly normal it's not a negative thing of course we hate Jews right that's how they were raised Jesus said someday these people are going to kill you these Jews are going to kill you thinking they're serving God Jews killed Christians like Muslims killed Jews why that's the environment they were in. It became normal to them for the Apostle Paul to kill Jews. He was a serial killer. He would drag them out of their homes. He would murder them. He would imprison them. He thought he was serving God. That was normal behavior to him. He didn't see it as, well, what do you mean I'm doing something wrong? Who, who are you to judge me? What are you, nuts? I'm standing up for Yahweh. These Christians are phonies. This Jesus, he's, he's, he's blasphemy. He's not God. 
Is this making sense? Paul was doing what was normal to him. Muslims, it's normal to hate Jews. That's how they're raised. Everybody in the family says something negative about a Jew. Well, you sit there and listen to that for 15 years. By the 15 years later, you're going to have a negative predisposition for Jews. Duh! If you grow up in a religion where there's all kinds of gods, it's perfectly normal to you. Why? That's how you were raised. Of course there's thousands of gods. You just pick out your own God, whatever suits you. The only way to convert somebody like that is through the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. You can't intellectually convert a Hindu. No, Jesus is God and he's, he died for your sins on the cross of Calvary. He loves you and he wants to save you. Well, wait a minute. Shamusha. He does the same thing. And then you get into an intellectual religious debate with somebody and nothing ever happens. The Holy Ghost is the only person that can change somebody's mind. He does it through the miracle working power of the person testifying and witnessing. Well, I don't have any miracle working power. That's because that's because you quit instead of going on like Joshua and developing your gifts, going through your trials, learning your lessons, learning your lessons. Oh boy, everybody has to learn their lessons. See, I know I know what you're thinking. Brother Mike sounds like my mom. Your mom was right. Your mom was right. You've got to learn a lesson. See, learning lessons under bad situations are a good thing, not a bad thing. If you're raised, if you're 12 years old and you go into a gang and you go through the initiation and you survive it, you're trained by that gang. To think a certain way and it's it's perfectly normal for you to think that way are, are they are they insane are they psychotic no they grew up in that environment from 13 or what have you and now they're 19 and now they're dead but from 13 to 19 before they got shot it was perfectly normal to do a drive-by perfectly normal to Burglarize something selling drugs. That's what we do But at age five that kid's not doing that See it takes the devil a while to Train you to do what he wants And if you don't renew your mind and change your life guess what happens in Grade school they do the exact same thing Miss that one. Huh? Huh? Miss that one. Huh? Okay, let's take the stack you missed. Missed it. Got it. Missed it. What am I doing there? I'm repetitively exposing you to two plus two, three plus three. You're in kindergarten or first grade, right? You want to learn your fruit. Okay? There's an apple. Okay. It's not the other student. This is on the card. Fruit on the card. There's an apple. There's a pear. That's a goat. What are you doing to the kid? Okay. Exactly what Satan will do to that same kid later. Here's a breast. Here's bootalicious. There's a naked breast. There's a naked boot. Oh, there's a little porn, soft core. Yeah. Here's training day. Here's here's X. Here's triple X. He trains you to become systematically desensitized to your environment, and then he takes over. What are your goals? Well, Romans 12. This is what you're going to do tonight. You're not going to be conformed to this world, but you're going to be transformed, morphed by the renovation of your mind, so that you may test everything that comes your way to determine what is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. And Hebrews chapter 12, seeing we are compassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, who are those? 
Yeah, the saints of God in Hebrews chapter 11. Who were those? The saints of God in Hebrews chapter 11 did not let the devil systematically desensitize them. They allowed God to do it. See, that process is not evil. And it's not good. It's just how you use it. Okay? Learning your 2 plus 2, 3 plus 3 is a good thing. Correct? Graduating through the steps of porn is a bad thing, but the process is the similar or same, right? It's how you do it. So Paul says, listen, follow these examples in 11, okay? Then in 12 he says, here's what you've got to do. You've got to do what they did. You've got to lay aside uncas, every burden you're carrying, all the burdens you're carrying. For yourself, for your family, for your finances, for your life, everything. Lay it aside. Then do what? What does it do? It besets you. Aparistasis. When you carry burdens, the person finally stops and he's just standing around doing nothing. He stalls out. That's what that word means. It, it's a besetting Sin. It's a sin that caused you to stop progressing in your Christian life. You stalled out right there. Why? You're carrying too many burdens when Jesus said you are to cast all your burdens upon him for he cares for you. Let us run with patient endurance, hupomone, the race set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, not the guy on TV, not me, or not someone in your family. You can never become Joshua looking at somebody else. Jehovah promoted him. He learned from Moses and Caleb. He learned from the sin of Israel. What sin? The nation of Israel, they were professional sinners. They were exceptionally good at it. And Joshua noted it. And instead of joining in, see, when the 12 spies came back, 10 of them went around and said negative things. Well, everybody started to repeat the negative things. And like dominoes, the whole nation went down the tubes. We went over that last week. Joshua stepped out of the line. Caleb stepped out of the dominoes. Why? They didn't let what they were saying desensitize them to the truth that that was the promised land and they were eventually going to get it. You had three guys that stepped out of the line. Moses, Caleb, Josh. You're Joshua tonight. You're in third place now, but that's your learning spot. That's the best place to be in. You'll soon be in second place that's a great spot to be in. You notice Caleb drifted out of that system. And then Moses screwed up. Boop. Joshua had been trained, ready to go. Why? He got out of the line when everybody was complaining and crying in fear. What did Jesus do? For the joy that was set before him, he, same Greek word, Pomeno, he fortitude. What kind of fortitude did he have to get to the cross? Boy, I have no idea. I, I wouldn't even be able to begin to. I would have fainted before I got to the whipping post. Had I been chosen by God to be your savior, all of you would be in hell. <laughs> Enjoy your trip. I would have never made it. How did he make it? I don't know. Thank you, Jesus. I have no way to explain it. It's beyond, beyond my pay grade. And he sat down at the throne of God. Philippians 4. Brethren, whatever things are, what? What's he saying there? You need to systematically desensitize yourself against negative thinking and instead do this. Let's read it. Truth. Good reports. Pure, lovely, just, virtuous. 
there you go if there be any praise Now that's not the regular Greek word for praise like praise the Lord. What is the Greek word? Panos means to find something that's hey That's great. Well, they did a good job. Well, that really helped a lot of people. Well done. Yeah, that was good You killed it on that one Okay Yep. Yeah. When you learn to be systematically desensitized against good things, your mind dwells on negativity constantly. While you're dwelling on negativity constantly, the devil is hitting you with one thought after the other, and he's trained your mind to fail. And you then become a failure as a Christian. You're my portion, Lord. I've said I would keep your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. What's he doing there? He was systematically desensitizing himself on God's holy word. Be merciful to me according to your word, for I thought on my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. There isn't any possible way for you to get healed or delivered ever by pointing your finger at somebody else who needs to be healed or delivered. Hey, you need to change, buddy. You just destroyed yourself. Okay? This is between you and God, not you and them. Hello? But wait a minute. They're idiots. Okay? I'm not going to argue with you. I've met them. They are idiots, but you're the one that wants to get healed. Leave the idiots on the idiot farm, and you focus on yourself, and you'll get healed. But my parents they were lousy. Oh my god. My husband did it. Okay. I know that and I agree with you. They shouldn't have done it. I got gotcha. you a fist pump on that one But you're gonna die sick why? Focusing on your crazy parents your insane relatives the idiots at work your spouse your kids If you want to get healed It's got to be on you not them. Thus saith the Lord. Let's close. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and if you will do that, what is right in His sight, if you will give ear to His commandments and keep the statutes, the Lord told the Jews, I will put none of these diseases upon you that I brought upon the Egyptian, for I am. Yahweh Rafka. I am Yahweh Rafka. I am the eternal God, your divine healer. And that's what you're going to do tonight. Let's pray. Lord, some of my friends here tonight have been around sin for so long that it seems normal to them. And. It doesn't affect them anymore. And in fact, they're doing things they know they shouldn't be doing. They're saying things they know they shouldn't say. And they don't have any conviction anymore. The Holy Spirit used to convict them. But they can't hear him convicting them anymore. They're doing things that are damaging themselves spiritually. And I know that's hurting your feelings. Because you want to take them from the minor leagues to the major leagues to the Hall of Fame. I saw what you did with Joshua. I saw what Balaam done to himself. I saw what Lot and his daughters did. The descendants of Lot were barred from going into the temple for ten generations. The Amorites and the Edomites were not allowed in the temple for ten generations. And tonight, some of my friends here who love you have been missing out on their blood-bought blessings and their God-given destiny 
because they were systematically desensitized to things that shouldn't be in their life and appear normal. They appear normal now. And sweet Holy Spirit, I'm asking you, I have nothing to do with this. You know I can't help anybody. Sweet Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to heal every person here tonight who's Balaam. Asking you to heal every person here tonight who's Lot. Lot was not an evil person. He grew up and got used to sin, and he had intercourse with both of his daughters. He would never have done that had he not grown up in Sodom and Gomorrah. And some of my friends here tonight have grown up in their own Sodom and Gomorrah. I didn't grow up like that. I grew up around poverty and alcohol. Some people have grown up around sexual perversion, violence, verbal criticism, chronic negativity, abandonment, loneliness. All these things, the Spirit of the Lord is more than well able to heal. And as Caleb said, we are well able to take the land. Let's go up now and possess it. But the other Christians said, we are not well able to take it. They are bigger than we are and stronger than we are. Now, if you've got something in your life that you think is bigger and stronger than you are, just raise your hand here so I can pray for you. Something's bugging you and this thing is getting to you. One, two, there you go. Three, thank you. Keep your hand up. Okay, ministry team, just go up right, right behind them real quick, would you? Go up right behind them. Here's a couple over here. There's one there. There was one over here. Where's that one over here? No? There's one. I need a couple other ministry people. Come up right behind that person. Hold their hands up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's something in their life that appears to be a Goliath. It appears to be insurmountable. You got a bad report. You got chronic negativity. Somebody kept, here's somebody up here, right here. This guy. Somebody said chronic negative things to you when you were a kid. You were systematically desensitized to listen to and to believe negativity. And as a result of that, your life has been filled with negativity and failure. Because when you spoke it out, you cursed yourself. You can curse yourself. Just raise your hand there. Let's go ahead and repent of that right now. Come on. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry that I see this thing as a Goliath. King David was not systematically desensitized to failure. He was desensitized against failure. He stood against Goliath and you're going to stand against Goliath right now just if you got your hand up just stand up where you are real quick just stand up if you had your hand up just stand up there you go raise your hands come on now father sweet Holy Spirit I want you to reach down and touch these people with their hands up their their face in a mountain that it started out as a molehill and they started to chronically think negative things and the thing turned into a mountain Somebody, the devil made a mountain out of a molehill. And they're going to repent of it right now. I'll repent of it now in the name of Jesus. Right this second, I'll repent of it. This is not a mountain. The Holy Spirit can break this thing. The blood of Jesus can crush it. The broken body of Christ can heal it. I, the riches of Christ can crush this evil curse of poverty. Right now, in the name of Jesus, alcoholism and drug addiction, every spirit causing those diseases, I command you in the name of Jesus, we command you in the name of Jesus to come out right now. Rejection, low self-esteem, self-hatred, lust. Come on out right now. Come on out right now. Come out. Come out. 
Get out of that body right now. Come on out. Word curses. Come out right now, quickly. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my mind. Negativity, come out. Come on. Get out of my mind. Get out of my mind right now. Seducing spirit, come out of my mind. Out. Come out. Right now. Lies, come out. Low self-esteem, come out. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Lust. Lust, come out. Fear. Fear, come on out. Come out. Go in Jesus' name. Fear, come out. Right now. I command you, you spirit of fear. Fear of the future. Fear of failure. Fear of losing. Come on out. Get out of that body. Come out. Satan, come out. Devil, come out of me. Come out right now. Hurry up. Get out. Right now. Come out. Get out of that body right now, you pervert. Come out of there right now. Come out. Chronic masturbation. Come out. Lust, come out. Lust of the eyes. Come out of my head. Lust for food. Come out of my body. Lust for food. Come out of my body. Right now. Lust for food. Come out. Come out. Food demon. Come out. Gluttony spirit. Come out. Right now. Gluttony in the name of Jesus. Come on out. Just take a breath and blow. Blow like that. Come out. Gluttony. Come out in Jesus' name. Perversion. Come out. Sodom. Sodom. Come out. Gomorrah. Come out. Zoar. Come out. Lust. Lot's daughter. Come out. Go in Jesus' name. Lot's daughter. Come out. Incest. Incest. Come out. Child abuse. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Child abuse. Come on out. Fear of failure. Unbelief. Doubt. Come on. Come out, you pervert. Sodom, you pervert. Come out of me right now. Gomorrah, you pervert. Come on out. Right now. Come out. Come on out. Come out of my body right now. Hurry up. Come on out. Out. Get out of that body. Come out quicker. Come out quickly. There he comes. There it comes. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Out. Come out right now. What's wrong with you? What happened? I've recently been born again about two weeks ago. I have intimacy with Christ. Oh, good. I had 20 years of head knowledge, and now I have intimacy with my father. So I've actually been living with a pure heart and clean hands recently. Okay, great. Yeah, I have. What's in there? Well, this is, yeah, it used to be shame. What's in it? It's been gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. What do you need God to do for you? So I, I was born with a broken spine. I have oh, spondylolisthesis. Okay. Watch out, Robert. Watch this. Stand around here. Turn around there. There you go. He needs a prayer for his back. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus. Spondylolisthesis. Spondylolisthesis. We bind your power. This guy just got recently saved. When you get saved, when you get saved, get out of that body right now. Come on out. He recently got saved, so now he gets to get healed. When you get saved, then you get healed. Come on. When you get saved, then you get delivered. Come on. Every demon, come on out. Every demon. Get out of that body right now. Spirit of infirmity, come on out. Generational curse of infirmity. Demon of tattoos. Come out of that body. Demon of lust for food. Come out of that body right now. Go. Spine, I command you to straighten up. I break that curse from his family tree. His parents, his grandparents, his great grandparents. Low back injury, I curse you. Come out. What you need, hon? Hmm? Sue, I call her Sue. What does she need? She has like her back, it's really bad. Her back? Yeah. Oh, come on over here. She's not a baby. Mm -hmm. Is she Catholic? Uh, are you Catholic to Sue? I was raised Catholic. Oh, you were raised Catholic? Wait, yeah. But okay. I've been going to the Christian church. Yeah, oh, you have? Oh, okay. Yeah. Here, let me have it. There you go. Close your eyes. You mind if I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Okay, close your eyes. 
at a girl. Me on the glasses for a second. Hold those. Close your eyes. What's your name again? Susanna. Susanna. All right, Lord. Look, Susanna's down here. She's standing right here. I'm so happy you brought her down here. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost already touched her. Thank you, Jesus. Just feel that? That's the Spirit of the Lord. Raise your hands. Every evil spirit, come out of Susanna. Come out of that body right now. There he is. Come on out. Every spirit from Catholicism, there it is right there. Come on out. Come out of her spine right now. Come out of that body right now. Come out, you spirit of fear. Come out right now. Fear of men. Come out. Rejection from childhood. Come out. Right now. Go. In the name of Jesus, come on out. Go. Right now. Come out. Take a big breath. Holy Spirit, come in. Take another big breath. Holy Spirit, come in. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe. Come in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe. Holy Spirit, touch. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Heal. Come out of her brain. Now just blow like this. Blow. Keep blowing. Come out of there. Hurry up, Spirit. Come out of her lungs. Come on out. Come out of there. Lord Jesus, I'm giving you my heart. Come out of my life. Every devil, come out of my life. Come out of my eyes right now. Come out of my soul, my fears. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come on out. Come out of her right now. Go. Come out right now. Come on out. Come out, Spirit, right now. Quickly. Come out. Body, I command you to heal. Heal. Yeah. Did you have pain in your body? Did you have pain in your body when you came here? Where? Your back? Check your back out. Check it out. Your back. <clears throat> Tell her to check her back out. <laughs> Ask her if her pain is still there. I'm still there? A little bit. Where at? Right here? Ready? That's that's one spot where the herniated disc is at. And when did that happen? Five months ago. Did you fall down? It was a car accident. Oh, car accident? Okay. You got a claim pending against for that car accident? Was it their fault? Are you suing them? Okay. They just found out last week what was going on. Because no one ever took an x-ray or an x-ray. I don't understand about the law part, but she had not received anything. There's no lawyer. It's a lot of mess. Oh, you don't have a lawyer? I do now. Oh, you do now? Okay. Okay, ready? Would you rather be healed or sue them? Healed. Healed, okay. Raise your hand. Say, thank you, Jesus. I love you, dear Lord. Heal. Spirit of infirmity, come out of that body right now. Go. Come out of that body right now. Come on out. Lift out of her. Lift out of her right now. Come on out. Come on out right now. Come on out. Go now. Heal. Heal in Jesus' name. Heal. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heal. Heal now. Heal. Heal. Be healed. Jesus, holy name, be healed. Spirit of infirmity, come out. Come on out. Out. Come on out. Check it. Tell her to check it. Tell her to check her back. Is your back still hurting? I'm not sure. I'm trying to get a feel for it right now. Okay, check it out. Did that did that hurt before? Did that hurt before? Jesus. Did that did this hurt before? When you did that, did that hurt? No, before you came here tonight, when you went like this, did that hurt? 
I can't do that. It hurts. Okay, try it. No. Okay. Do you have do you have somebody that you have bad feelings about or unforgiveness for? Can you think of anybody that you have bad feelings about? Yeah. What's their name? My mother. Your mother? What'd she do to you? Huh? What'd she do to you? Um, she, I was, I came from an affair. She never wanted me in all my life. So your mother rejected you? Yeah. What was her name? Cause Rosa. Is she still alive? Yeah. Okay. Now just pray along with me, okay? Dear Jesus, I want you to go to Rosa tonight and put your loving hands on her. I want you to forgive her for what she done to me. I want you to forgive my mother for what she did to me. I'm having a hard time with that one. Okay. Let's work. Let's work through it so your back can get healed. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. The Bible says if I don't forgive my mother. The Bible says if I don't forgive my mother. You won't forgive me of my sins. You won't forgive me of my sins. Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five. So tonight, so tonight Rosa must be forgiven. Rosa must be forgiven. I have to forgive her. I have to forgive her. Go ahead. Go ahead and forgive her. Did you? You just forgive your mother? Did you just forgive your mother? I don't want to. Okay, now. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? Yes. Okay, your mother is blocking your healing. What, what? Your mother's blocking your healing. The Bible says that if you have bad feelings about your parents, a curse comes on you. Okay, I'll take that. A car accident. Back pain. Okay. Rosa must be forgiven. Okay. Go ahead and lead her in a prayer of forgiveness for her mother. Go ahead. Go ahead. What you need, hon? What you need? I just need a uh, prayer for... I've been depressed. I quit smoking. <laughs> yeah. And but, I don't know whether it's... I've just been... Now, uh, there's a spirit in your lungs that keeps the urge for smoking going. But that's not the problem. There was a root cause to smoking. Why were you smoking? Why what? Why were you smoking? Because that was my um, that was my comforter. That was my you know. But now I'm. It's like okay, Jesus. Is it a stress comfort. reliever? Yes. And at what age did you start smoking? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Have you repented? Yes. All right. Let's make sure. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for using cigarettes as my comforter. I should have never done that. And I apologize. And I command this spirit to come out of my lungs right now. Take a breath and blow. Come on out. There he is. Keep coughing. Coming out. There it comes. Come out of her lungs. Come on out. There he goes. Come out. There he goes. Come out. Come on out. Come out right now. Come out. Keep coughing. There it comes. Come out of her lungs, devil. Come on out. Heal. Come on out. There it comes. Come out, devil. Come on out, devil. Come on out right now. Come out right now. There he comes. How's she doing? She's what? She's, she's trying. She's Come on out right now. Hold that. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. <laughs> there it comes. 
Pain, I command you, Jesus, let me get out. Anna, girl, get out of me right now. Get out. Get out of me right now. Go in Jesus' holy name. Out. Come out. Come out. Rejection. Right now. Go. There it goes. Fear. Fear. Come out of there. Come out of my lungs. Clear out. Every spirit in my lungs. Come out. 15 years. 15 years of smoking. Come out. Come out of my lungs. 15 years of sinning. Come out of my body right now. Come on out. Come on out. Did you repent tonight? I wanted to do that. Okay. Let's go. Repent of what? Come out of my body. What do you got to repent of? Well, there's a sin that's so easy to set. What is it? The Kennard, the younger brother issue with Kennard, and oh. and then there's the there's a it's about to get that way. Then there's just the message. Come out. My transforming of my mind. Come out. Curse now listen. God. Did you ask God to forgive you for your sins? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Did you ask God to forgive you of your sins? Yes. Did he? You just asked me if I repented. No, I just asked you, did you ask God to forgive you of your sins? I just asked you that. And it's accepting him as my savior, I repented of my sins. Okay. Yes. No, let me ask you again. Did you ask God to forgive you of your sins? Come out of there. Right now. Come out of my stomach. Come out. Did you? Did he? I assume he did. Okay. Jesus said, freely you have received, so you must freely give. You didn't deserve to be forgiven, did you? Come out of there right now. You got it for free. Free gift from God. I love you. You asked me to forgive you. It's gone. Come out of there. Right? Okay. You must do it for him. Come on. Come out of there. Poison, come out. You must do it for your brother. You got it free? Jesus said, freely you have received, so freely give. Go ahead. Give it to your brother. Get out of my head. Come out of my head right now. Come out of there. Every negative thought, come out. Every lie. Come out of there. I don't want to be in a relationship with Okay. Now, I never said you'd be in a relationship with him. You didn't hear anything I said. Let me start over. The Bible says be reconciled to your brother. I don't want to be in a relationship with him. Okay. Now, the Bible doesn't say you have to be in a relationship with him. It said reconciled. And so what do I exactly, what do I exactly do? Okay, I just told you. Let me repeat it. You were freely forgiven by God when you asked him. You confessed your sins. You said, Lord Jesus, I sinned. So many sins, unbelievable. I'm asking you to forgive me. And he heard you. And he forgave you. Come out of there. Keep coughing. Come on out. Poison, come out. And he heard you. And so he said, listen, I freely forgave you. You must now freely forgive your brother. For anybody else to get this. Yep. Go ahead. I have done this. I have done this. You forgave him? Yes, I have forgiven him. The sin that so easily affects me is the issue of how I have to deal with him. And okay. when you said call him up, I did. I sent him an email because I didn't have phone. Did you apologize? I called in the email. I apologized. And when I called him up, I asked to speak to my aging mother on the phone. 
He started in on me. I did not engage back. I didn't do anything. It says get rid of all strife. Get the strife and discord. I didn't engage back. Good. Okay. You've done great. So, so now. Okay. What Perfect. And then trans being transformed by the renewing of my mind. Right. I'm still hating cursing God. Still hating cursing him. Um, so that's an issue there. Okay. Um, Come out. Now, the, uh, the issue about your brother, is that over now? I don't know. I mean, how do you feel about him? I don't want to be in a relationship with him. Okay. I wish that, I just wish that, um, I, I wish we could have just cut ties and separate. I don't want to be in a relationship with him. Okay. Nobody said you had to. The Bible says you reconciled with your brother. You did reconcile it. You apologized. Uh, I did, I did. You sent him an email. Uh -huh. I called him. And he didn't receive it. Well, that's his problem, not yours. All right. So is the you issue did it. done? Is the is issue done? Yeah, the issue's done except for one last thing. Do you have any negative feelings about your brother? Yeah, I think I do. Okay, go ahead and repent. That's called ought. That has to come out. It's called ought. Okay, go ahead. Come out of there. Right now, every demon, come on out. Get out of that stomach now. Come out now. Dear Jesus, please forgive me. Every pervert comes out of me tonight. All of them. You child sex. Sodom and Gomorrah, come out of me. Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm not going to get burned up and die and go to hell. Come out. Come out of here right now. Sodom and Gomorrah, burning up, burning up and going to hell. I'm not going to hell. All right, what's wrong with your legs? They're just coming out. I don't know. I went back. Where to at? I was right home, right here, right here. In the thigh area? Yeah. And in the hip area? Yeah. Okay. Now just think real hard. Somebody did somebody hurt you real bad in your past? Oh God! Yeah. Okay. Uh, How many? Dozens or two or three? My dad, um, another one, his name, I married him in Mexico because he was already married here. He beat me. What was his name? Joe. Joe. My dad was Lawrence. Lawrence and Joe. He does bad. Who's the third one? The third one? All right. Here we go. Now let's go. Lord Jesus, I lift up Joe. To you, I lift up my dad to you. They hurt me really bad when I was younger. They hurt me really bad when I was young. And these bad feelings I have for my dad and my ex husband or my boyfriend, or whatever he was, is blocking my healing. It's blocking my healing. And I'm going to repent of it right now and bless these two people and ask you to forgive them and have mercy on them right now in the name of Jesus. I repent of any bad feelings I have for my dad, my ex, any bad feelings, that's ought. That ought is blocking my healing in my hips. Heal. 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 And I release both of them from my soul now. Take a breath. Blow. Come out. Come on out. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come on out. Come out. That's him. Keep coughing. Come out. There he is there. Come on out. There he is. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come out. There he is. They're coming out now. Go. Come on out. Come on out. <laughs> there they come. Keep going. There they come. Come on out. Keep going. Sodom and Gomorrah, come out of me. Come on out. Right now. Come out. Come out of me right now. Dad, I love you, but I have to let you go now. Go. Dad, go. Dad, leave me now. Dad, leave me now. Go. There he is. Keep coughing. Come on out. Spirit of infirmity, come out of my hips. 
Come on, Elliot. Out. Come on out. There he comes. Here he comes. That's him right there. Come on over. Come on out. Come on over throat. Come on that throat right now. Go. Here he comes. Here he comes. Go. Go. Command my ex. That every curse word he spoke over me to be come out of me right now. I forgive him and I let him go. Get out of the stomach. Here he comes. There it is. Keep coughing. Come on out. There it comes. Come on out. Spirit, come out of me now. Every spirit from my ex, I command you to come out of my body right now. Lusting for food, using food as a comfort. Come out of me. There it is. That's it. Come on out. Unclean spirit of food. Go. Anger at God. Come out. Anger for God. Come out. Come out of me right now. Anger for God. Low self esteem. Out. Get out of my body. Come out of my throat quickly. Come out of my hips right now. Go. Come out of my hips right now. Go. Right now. Go. I let my dad go. Come out. I let my dad go in Jesus' holy name. Come on, just repent of it. I let my dad go. I release him from my soul now for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life, I release him. Go. Come out. Come on out. Come on out. Everything evil in me, I command it to come out. Every negative emotion, come out of me. The hatred I had for my dad when I was young, come out. Hate. Hate in my dad, come on out. <laughs> there he comes, there it comes. Hating my dad, come out. That's him. That's him right there. There he comes. Hating my dad, come on out. Hating my dad, go right now. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Love you. Her dad abused her. Her dad abused her. Yeah. Come out. I'm releasing my dad right now for my soul. Let's go. Come on out. Come out right now. Come out right now. You don't look like you're repenting right now. What are you doing? I was listening. I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Well, then it's done. Now, this blasphemy spirit in your head, blasphemy, he keeps cursing God. Okay? Why are you leaving him in there? You like it? No, in the sense that I know it's wrong, but sometimes I really do agree with the spirit. About okay. It. So, so it's, sometimes I, I am so hurt and mad at God that I, I am glad that it does that. Yeah, and he's laughing at you. Right? Because he knows it wasn't God's fault, it was he did it. He did. A, he brought all that crap on you. So you don't seem very mad at him, but you're mad at God, who's innocent. Come on, there, you pervert, Sodom! Come out of me! You're mad at an innocent person. When you're mad at an innocent person, you're freeing the guilty. That's injustice. Go ahead and repent. Get out, Sodom. Hmm? Leave me in the repentance. What should I say? Oh, Lord, Lord, she is not mad at this demon at all. She's talking to me like she's talking about a ham sandwich. This thinking pervert in her brain lied to her and got her to curse God. She cursed God. She cursed you, Lord. And this demon blamed it on her. When he did it. Get out. And she agreed with him. Go. So his sin is his sin, and her sin's her sin. I ask you right now, Lord, to give her the gift of hate for this ugly cursing spirit in her brain. Right now, the gift of hate. Go. Give her the gift of hate and attack him. 
Attacky. I just want to thank you for your church. I've been watching really? a couple of your live streams. Yeah. And uh, it was great, man. I just want to thank you so much, brother. Yeah. And I did a couple of things when you were doing I was doing this and I was sliding, I'm screaming at my neighbors. Probably thought I was crazy. Did they come out? Stop. Oh, he's lust and, and porn and fornication and booze and dope and, and all that crap. Now, let me ask you a question. The porn, the booze, the dope is normally not the problem. Okay. That's just the one that manifests. Underneath that is the root of it. What's the root of it? I don't know. Did somebody hurt you as a kid? No, no. I'm acting up in a really good Christian Were you abandoned family? as a kid? No, no. Really How about as a first marriage? I was raised in the church. I, I guess I was married one time. I got two kids. How'd that go? Terrible, man. Just like every, every relationship. What happened with her? It's just, we met in bars. We met in bars. Okay, you know, and every, this now is you speak in tongues. No, I tried. I and tried, man. I wanted to so bad. Now, uh, did you have an anxiety disorder of some kind? No, not that I know. You don't? I don't think so. Okay, now and maybe I do. Yeah. Now I want to talk to you for a minute. Okay. You see how you're talking to me? No, 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 no. I'll show you. Okay. Oh yeah. Do that. Make you stay down. down. Like you were about oh. the same way That's a fear spirit in here. Oh, no. Okay, now let's trail it back. Okay. Were you scared when you were young? Maybe. Were you afraid of something or someone? Did you almost get killed or something like that? She couldn't just release it. No. Now, how old were you when you got married? I'm 52 now. I was married in uh, 2014. Uh, no, you were first married. Only one time. Oh. Yeah, I've only been married one time. Okay, you ever live with a guy? Huh? Live with a guy. I live with one now. No, I mean, when you were younger. Did I ever live with one? No. When you were younger. Besides my parents? No, with a girl. Did you ever live with a woman? Oh, okay. Not that you didn't marry. Oh, like you are now. Oh yeah. Okay. Now the girl you're dad would tell me that all the time. She would say, "It's your, own, it's, it's you get involved with these women, expecting to take care of you." And he was right. Okay. Now, was your dad verbally hard on you? No. no. Was, was your mother? Because I was doing the wrong things. No. No, they were such good parents. But I do remember one time as a young kid, my sister came in one time. I know my mother cheated on my father. I know that's what it was about. But I was so young. But then it, it, it stopped. Well, your mother was having an affair? Well, not well, necessarily. I think it was a one-time thing. Okay. And then how'd you find out about it? My sister came down when my dad was yelling at my mother. And I, that's the only time I've ever really heard that. I mean, I didn't grow up. Did it scare you? Oh, yeah, of course. But I, I didn't really know what was going on. Did he, uh, your dad, was he screaming at her? Oh, yeah, they were both. Moses yeah, so young, you know. You shall be healed. So young, meaning two or three or five no, or no, six. Probably, yeah, about that. About ten. About right ten. Yeah. Okay. Now, now this intensity of your personality. How long you had that? This intensity. Intensity. Oh, man, I'm like. Well, when when did that start? Well, when I first got saved, I'm, I've always been like this. Ever what, what age was that? Pretty much uh, when my father passed away. What, what age was that? Oh, uh, that was five and a half years ago. Oh, so you're what? How old are you now? 52. 30, 52? Yes. So it'd be mid 40s, your dad died. Yeah, he died in thir uh, 2013. That's when you got saved? Uh, yeah, that's when the Lord revealed what he revealed to me. What did he reveal? He, he came to me and he said, it was seven days after I buried my father. Um, I was in like a trance like state, like almost like Paul was in Acts up on the roof when the sheet came down. And I was just like laying in bed and this faceless figure said, I have a surprise for you. And boom, my father appeared. But I could tell, I could just see from his shoulders up to his head, I just got chills everywhere. I could tell he had a, this most beautiful suit on and my dad had blue eyes and his eyes were so blue. And he looked 22 years old and his eyes looked right at me and smiled from ear to ear and a white light shot out. A white light? A white light. And I woke up, just shout out, I woke up. It was about five years ago? Five and a half years ago, yes. Okay. It was in March of uh, 2013. Now, what church were you raised yeah, in? Well, I was going to tell you, I watched your video on Messianic Jews, Eastern Orthodox, Serbian Eastern Orthodox. You were in Eastern Orthodox? Yeah, and I, brought, okay. I, I want to show you. I brought my cross with me because I know now, about this jewelry. Yeah, have a seat for a second. Okay. Now, listen. Every ungodly man is. 
Okay, well, I can't exactly figure out what's going on here. Okay. <laughs> Your parents were Jewish and they converted no, to Christ? No, no. Um, my parents, uh, my mother. Is Your mother was Orthodox? Yeah, so I grew up uh, in a Serbian or Eastern Orthodox church. Okay. Did you grow up in a kind of a legalistic environment where you were required to do certain things? No. No. No, I, I, no. no. Were they uh, strict Orthodox or were they casual um, Christians? No, not like they're just a typical blue collar family from Canton, Ohio. Did either of them speak in tongues? No, I've never heard. I've never even really seen my dad read the Bible, but we were at church all the time and, and functions and like. And you were at church all the time. All the time we go to church. Okay. Now look. Um, that wasn't your dad. The devil was trying to get her ready to smoke and say, hey, if you okay, just well, a pack of cigarettes, I was thinking one, the last one. Mouth. I've had the three of them. We know that it's a lie. We know that it's a lie. He's trying to get her back. No, and then the second one, too. The second one, I remember. She shall not sow to the flesh, she shall reap those things in the spirit, because she's going to walk through the spirit. What's that? Enemy sending me those? He's covering something up in here. These, they were so bright and so set apart. I know. And shining like gold, but the third one was the gray one. The what? The third one was gray, meaning my dad, I'm just my dad crying. And, I, and the, the, the tears I could tell were fake. And I was behind the sheet of glass up when you get arrested behind glass and people come to visit you. And um, that one I, I believe was from the enemy for sure. Because I know I tell everybody my testimony. And that's, well, why does it? Why do I think about that? And it brought me in church constantly. Now I read the Bible and I seek it out and I just preach it to everybody. And I preach it, but I'm, I just, I don't know. God wants to Okay. Because he loves her. I'm tricking, tricking you. Huh? Tricking you. It wasn't your dad. No? No, once you're gone, you can't come back. No, no, no. It was just what they showed, what the Lord showed me. He showed me my dad. But crying. But that's, the, that's what I want to tell you. Then the second one, the second one was. I seen she this person walk into this so huge much. room. I know she was right. Jesus said, "My father has many rooms in my man's in, 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 his, in his house." So I seen this person walk in this room sideways. I kept on going, "Who's that? Who's that leaning forward?" And then they do an about face to me again. It was my dad. He looked just a little older, but he looked so good. And then this, he didn't have no expression. And I ran, remember running up to him, "Dad, you're back." Bear hug him. And I woke up crying. Time and time that was again. the second one. These and ones were set apart from any other thing I've ever dreamt about in my life, except for the last one that really bothered me, and that's the one where I was behind the sheet of glass, which now, I've been thinking about it, the demons made that one specially for me. And, I, and because I tell everybody about the other ones, so they all three were? Man. They uh, send you good ones first, and they send you the other ones. Okay. Well, now, I know I had a couple ones the other day that I know were straight from the devil. Yeah, I know. Now listen, uh, I'm going to try something here. Okay. Can you relax? Now just take a big breath and relax. Big breath. Let your body kind of relax. Let your body relax. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you see this man of God sitting here? He's living with some gal. He's been systematically desensitized to sin. The demons kept sending him his dad. And you don't do that. You don't send dead people to your children. You send the Holy Ghost to them. Not dead people. Now pray, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, that this over four decades of sinning, four decades of living in sin, over four decades, and now you're still living in sin. 
But tonight he's changed his mind. He wants to serve you because down deep he loves you. And this intensity in his body. There's a spirit of fear hiding in there. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we renounce these dreams of his dead dad. Come over back right now in the name of we Jesus. We renounce these Coyle. dreams Coyle. right now. They were demonic dreams setting him up to hurt him. The spirit that gave him those dreams was hiding in his brain. Up and out. Up and out right now. You come out of there, you rotten devil. Come out now. Come out of there. All the other demons you let in, lust, anger, frustration, anger toward women, anger toward himself, negative feelings about himself, disappointments about himself. In the name of Jesus, every spirit I just mentioned, Come out of there. There he is. You just jumped. Come out of there. Take a breath and blow. Come on out. Come on out, spirit. Every spirit from his dad. Come on out. Keep blowing. There he is. Come on out of there. Every spirit from the Orthodox Church. Come out of there. Come on out. Orthodox. Come out of there. Religion. Come out. Legalism. Come out. Every spirit from his dad, come on out. Every spirit of lust his mother had when she committed adultery that got into her son and he committed adultery, come out of there, mother. Come on out. Every spirit from my mother, I command her to come out of my body right now. Out. Come out of there. Right now. Come out of my stomach. Come out of there. Anger. Violence, hatred, self-hatred, come out of there right now. Leave me now. I'm turning my life over to the Son of God. I'm not going to compromise my faith anymore. No more lust. No more drugs. No more booze. All that wickedness and all that evil, every spirit, come out of my legs. Come out. Come out of my legs right now, you rotten devil. Come out of there. Get out of me. Get out. Come out. Get out. Just take a breath. Breathe. Come out of my lungs. Come out of my lungs right now. Come on out. Committing adultery. Come on out. Porn. Come on out. Every spirit of porn. Out. Every spirit of anger. Come on out. Right now. Come out. Yeah. Give him my cards out there. She wasn't listening. Come on out right now. Go. Come out, spirit. Stop jumping and come out of there. Come out of me right now. Just leave. Lift out of you. Lift on out. Father God, forgive me for not using my discernment and thinking them demons were my dad. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that you don't bring back dead relatives. You bring people the Holy Spirit. I should have known. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry I compromised my faith. I'm so sorry I went over to the kingdom of darkness. Drugs, pornography, alcohol, parties. Demon infected women. I've slept with many women who had demons. And I'm so sorry, Lord. Because I know that you love me. And every time I did it, I hurt your feelings. Not because you want to condemn me, but because you love me. I'm so sorry I hurt you. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me, dear Lord. I hurt your feelings. Oh. I'm so sorry, Lord. Have mercy upon me, Lord. 
Please forgive me. God, have mercy on me. Lord, I hurt your feelings and I ask for your forgiveness. Please help me. Take this intensity out of my soul. Take these transfer spirits from all these women. I should have never gotten involved with them. I knew better. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. God, forgive me. I'm sorry I hurt you. And I repent of it. I lift my current girlfriend up to you. And I know she's got demons too. I lift her up to you right now. She doesn't understand the spirit world. She doesn't understand how dangerous what we're doing is. Dear Jesus, please forgive me. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Have mercy on her. Father God, I look back over my life and I can't believe it. I hurt so many people. And many people hurt me. And tonight I ask you for your forgiveness. I ask you to forgive me, Lord. For hurting myself and hurting others. I've hurt many women over the years. I've hurt many people over the years, and they've hurt me. They've hurt me. The devil was using me to hurt others. I'm so sorry. He used me to hurt myself. The demons brought me a bunch of bad women and bad relationships. Every relationship I've ever had ended up in a disaster. And yet I kept doing it. I should have waited for the woman you had chosen for me. And I know it's not too late. It's not too late for me. I got a chance. It's not too late. It's not too late for me. If I repent, the Spirit of God will come to my heart. If I repent, you will bless me. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry for my anger. I used to curse like crazy. And I didn't know that I was cursing myself when I said it. Because I've cursed others that have hurt me and insulted me, wounded me. I've cursed them. I take it all back. I repent of all of it. I'm sorry I hurt them. There you go. Let your tears go. Go on. Let your tears go. Thank you, Jesus. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, Lord. The Bible says the Lord is near those who have a broken heart. He saves those who have a contrite spirit. Pride, anger, arrogance, human strength. All quench the spirit of the Lord. Tears bring the spirit in. And tonight, I'm going to forgive myself. I've been the one I hated the most. I've been disappointment to myself since I was young. And I'm sorry, Lord, because I know that hurt you. You love me. I've forgiven myself today at the Arizona Deliverance Center. I'm going to forgive myself before I walk out of this building. I'm going to forgive my wife, ex-wife. Have mercy on her, Lord. Please forgive her. I hurt her. I mistreated her. She did me too, but I had, I had no right to treat her the way I did. I had no right to say those things I said, even though she was wrong. I was wrong. And I want to be forgiven tonight. I want mercy tonight. So I must give it. So freely I have received, freely I will give. Please forgive my ex-wife, Lord. Please forgive all these women. There's so many now, I can't even count them. 
But the Holy Spirit counted them. He saw every single one of them. And I ask you to forgive and bless each woman I ever slept with. Every single one of them. I ask you to forgive me, Lord, for every person I fought with and argued with. Every person I got in a shouting match with. Every person that hated me and criticized me. I ask you to forgive them. Every single one of them. Every one of them. When I leave the deliverance center tonight, I'm not going to have one bad feeling for any person in my past. Not one, including myself. I'm going to release it out of my soul right now. Right this second. When I go home tonight, I'm going to sleep like a baby. I command this intensity to leave me tonight. Lift out of me. Replaced with love, gentleness, meekness, self-control, the fruit of the Spirit. That's what I've always wanted, Lord. I always dreamed of having the fruit of the Spirit. But these demons kept me from manifesting it. But I know I have it deep down in my soul. I know I have it. And I'm going to release it tonight. Love and joy and peace. Gentleness and meekness and goodness. I have it in there. God, please forgive me. I don't want to live like this anymore. I can't go on into my 60s the way I went into my 50s. I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't want to end up as old as Brother Mike and living in this kind of a horrible life. I can't do it. I have to turn my heart over to you, Lord. I must do it. And you want me to. Because you love me and you've forgiven me tonight. The blood of Jesus has washed away my insane life. Right now, I receive it. I receive it. I receive mercy and forgiveness, and I will give mercy and forgiveness. I will give it because I received it. I got it free, so I'll give it free. So I love you, Lord. The Bible says that you collect all of our tears and you put them in your book. These tears of mine are yours tonight, Lord. These are my tears thanking you for forgiving me. Thanking you for giving me the compassion to forgive others. Thanking you for helping me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Say it. Thank you, John. Thank you, Lord. I love you. There you go. Keep going. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. Say it. Good. Hallelujah. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Keep going. That's the anointing on you. You've got a repentance anointing right now. Keep going. Just confess it. Everything, Lord. The, the, the lust, the sloth, the laziness. God. The greed. Thank you, Jesus. The deceiving. Thank you, Jesus. The using. Hallelujah. The, the, the masturbation, the lust, even. Thank you, Jesus. The unforgivableness. Good. Keep going. You're praying fantastic. Great. The vanity. The vanity. Thank you, Jesus. Keep going. Don't stop. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Yes. You're repenting of it tonight. Just repent of it. You're going to repent of it right now. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. The rage. The rage. The outburst of rage. Outburst of rage. Rage. I repent of that evil. I repent of that evil right now. 
Good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You're doing great. Keep going. Don't stop. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.